I really want to know what this is. I want like a shirt this print. Uh, I'm going to need to uh, scan this, send it to my shirt guy. Hi, I'm Frank. I'm a professional chef, and these are my $270 rib ingredients. Hey, I'm Joe. I'm a home cook, and these are my world famous $24 rib ingredients. Uh, good luck with that, Chef Frank. All right. A lot less on this tray. Oh, this is all stuff that I know except this, 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 um, and these. I was planning on making mustard barbecue glazed Iberico spare ribs with shaved fennel and bitter greens. This is gonna be from something exotic. These are giraffe ribs probably, if I had to guess. Which I was gonna butcher and braise in white wine, chicken stock, and a whole bunch of aromatics. This looks like wine, so I think I'm done. I was gonna make two types of mustard, one yellow and one Dijon, which I was then gonna use to make my own mustard barbecue sauce with dark beer and honey. All 30 mustards that you have given me will be made perfectly. Don't worry about it, Frank. And finished off with a sprinkling of crushed earth pepper. I don't know what any of that means. These ribs were a force to be reckoned with. Joe, please use their power for good, not evil. The ribs look amazing. They look better than mine. I'm gonna be honest. With Joe's recipe, I have ingredients you might find in your pantry or local grocery store. These might be on the simpler side, but with a little bit of technique and a little bit of love sprinkled on, they're gonna be great. If I had a guess, this would all cost about 20, 22 bucks. Oh, 24, okay. Pig's not as cheap as it used to be, huh? If I had to guess the cost of all of this, I would say $203.78, final answer. Oh, two, okay. I'm always, I'm too conservative. I'm gonna start dreaming bigger. Right here I have Chef Frank's recipe book, and this is what I'm gonna be making today. Mustard barbecue glazed Iberico spare ribs. Am I saying that right? Iberico pigs are from Spain. They're fed acorns. It is the best pork you'll ever eat. If I'm a Spanish pig, I'm thinking, what are the American pigs eating? Because acorns sounds terrible. So Joe, these ribs, you wanna start off with your rack, the meat side down, bone side up. We're gonna pull that membrane off. This is so satisfying. And I'm sorry to this pig. Why wouldn't, why can't we eat this? This is acorn fed pig membrane. Now that membrane at the end of the day is edible, but it does make your ribs a little less tender. So we're gonna pull that off, throw it away. That's my rent in a bowl right there. I'm gonna save it and sell it on the black market. After that, you're gonna to wanna to cut the ribs in half because we're gonna braise them. A whole rack is not gonna fit in the pot. The knife just goes through like, like a knife through ribs. As far as seasoning goes, I keep it super simple. Salt, pepper, and then we're ready to start the braise. So Joe's recipe was pretty simple. He had some baby back ribs. He was gonna put on some store-bought sauce, side of coleslaw, side of toast. I think I can change that and make it a little bit better. I'm gonna make a smoked boneless baby back rib sandwich on Texas toast with dill slaw. Frank, don't mess up my recipe. It's perfect as it is. This is gonna be similar to a seasonal sandwich sold at a popular restaurant with two golden arches, but better. So in order to make this into a sandwich, I have to take the bones out. So I realized taking the bones out of ribs could be something that people get upset about, but this is for a very specific sandwich that I wanna make. This is my vision as a chef. My ribs are boned out, now I'm just gonna cut it down to size, and here are our boned out ribs ready to be seasoned and cooked. I'm ready to start cooking my ribs, and the first thing I'm gonna do is brown them in a pan. When I make ribs, they go just straight in the oven for like three hours or something. I take a nap. There's a lot of steps to this. First, we're gonna brown them, then we're gonna braise them, then we're gonna bake them in the oven, and then we're gonna broil them. Can't nap with the Spanish pig. They eat acorns. Heat up my pan, throw some oil in there, let the oil get hot. All right, let's drop my ribs in there. I'm gonna sear these till they're nice and brown. Uh, flip it over. Do the same thing on the other side. Ribs are boned out, it's time to season them. I'm gonna get a nice piece of plastic wrap, more than I think I'll need. I'm gonna take my ribs, put them on, and then slather them with mayo. Mayonnaise lends a lot of moisture, it adds a little bit of uh, acidity to this as well. I think it's better than ketchup. Don't tell Emily I said that. And it helps my spices stick. So mayonnaise, sazon on one side, give it a flip, a little bit of mayo, a little more of my sazon. Sazon is basically a Puerto Rican spice blend you can buy in any supermarket. And this is the key benefit to using the plastic wrap. You can basically use it, cut it off, and wrap it without really making more of a mess. 
I'm gonna fold those ends in and I'm gonna get another piece of plastic wrap just to seal up. So you notice I went like this. Now I'm gonna seal up those other sides. So we're basically making a nice little airtight pouch. On to the next one. One quick note about the plastic wrap that I'm using, it is restaurant or industrial grade. If you use a supermarket brand, you are going to have plastic rips and you don't want that. The plastic wrap that's professional does not melt. The stuff in the supermarket does melt. Not only does this wrap them nice, it also shapes them. The first half of my ribs are just about done. I'm gonna take them out of the pan and drop them into my Dutch oven. Look at that, it's perfect. In you go. And now we're gonna grab this other little slab right here, drop it in there. Ooh, listen to that, cover this up. So my ribs are seasoned and wrapped. Now we wrap them in foil. When I wrap these in plastic wrap and foil, I call it the poor man's sous vide. Basically it seals all the juices and seasoning inside and the ribs cook in their own juices. Is it a true barbecue? No, but you get a really nice juicy tender product. My second piece is finished and it's going in the Dutch oven with the first one. I'm gonna use all of what's at the bottom of this pan to make a braising liquid for my ribs. Basically braising is cooking in a moist heat environment covered with liquid. I'm gonna open up my wine and possibly light a candle. They asked me if I knew how to open a bottle of wine and I said yes. This is so embarrassing. There we go. The reason I want Joe to braise these ribs is because it cuts down on cooking time. It basically cuts it in half. And not only that, it's gonna make them super tender and give them a lot of flavor. Pan's back on at medium heat and I'm gonna throw in my onions and garlic. My onions are looking and smelling beautiful. I think they're ready to put the wine in there. This is called deglazing, not usually a, a part of my rib routine, but you know, to each their own. If you were trying to figure out which guy is the home cook, which one's the pro chef, I can't tell. I'm the home cook. We're gonna reduce the wine a little so we don't have all that alcohol. Once the alcohol is cooked off, everyone back in the pool, put some chicken stock, put your aromatic spices on, and you're good to go. A little salt and pepper, cover it up. So you line them up, you put them in the oven at 350 for about an hour and a half, and then you let them cool completely. Bring in this to a boil, and then I'm gonna put it in the oven 350 for a couple of hours. Time for the barbecue sauce. Joe sent me just a regular barbecue sauce. It tends to be a little on the sweet side, so we're gonna jazz it up just a little bit. Turn your heat on low. We're gonna add our barbecue sauce. I'm gonna add a nice hefty pinch of salt, and then I'm gonna go kind of crazy with the fresh cracked black pepper. Some white vinegar, it doesn't need to be fancy vinegar. This will just cut down on that sweetness. And I'm gonna give this a stir and let it warm up before I add that butter. And then I'm gonna take my couple of knobs of butter, throw it in there, and just continue to stir until the butter is melted and incorporated. Butter is melted and gone, we can shut it off. A super simple and effective way to make your barbecue sauce just that much better. It's time to pull my ribs out of the oven. They're all cooked up, so I'm gonna go get them right now. Boom, here we go, get ready. Big reveal. This smells amazing. If you're watching at home, I wish you could smell this. Take the ribs out, and they are real soft, real juicy. I'm gonna strain this braising liquid into the measuring cup, and I'm gonna save it for my barbecue sauce. No sandwich is complete without some sort of topping, so I'm gonna take the dill that Joe gave me and the mayo, I'm gonna make a dill mayonnaise. Mayo goes into the bowl. Season with some salt, some sugar, because we want a little bit of sweetness, black pepper, a little bit of our white vinegar, and a nice amount of our dried dill. We just mix that up. I'm ready to go with mustard number one of 12. So Joe, you're making two types of mustard. You're making a yellow mustard and a Dijon mustard. And we have to do that because there are components in our barbecue sauce. Everything's just getting dumped right into the pot. I'm gonna put in the water, mustard powder, the vinegar, salt, turmeric, a little bit of garlic powder, and paprika. Bring it to a simmer, let it rest. Done, easy peasy. Right now I'm just breaking up the chunks as we say in the, in the cooking world. This is Joe's famous chunkless mustard. I'm gonna let it cool and then it will be part of my barbecue sauce. Time for the slaw. Joe is gonna make a traditional mayonnaise based slaw. I'm taking the mayonnaise out, using it elsewhere, and I'm gonna do a vinegar based slaw. I'm just gonna take my cabbage and cut it in half. Take your core out, and I'm only gonna use half of this. Now what I'm gonna do with this is just cut it into like six pieces, and then we can go directly in to our food processor. And we're gonna pulse. I don't want it to be mush, I just want it to be chopped up nice and small. Second half, the cabbage is chopped. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of salt right now just to draw out a little bit of moisture. 
and to also kind of break our cabbage down a little more so it's not like super chewy and crunchy. Let's set this aside for a minute or two and then we can make the slaw. This is mustard number two and it's gonna be a Dijon mustard. Dijon mustard is mustard from Dijon, France. It's easy, it's easy like last time. I take all these ingredients, I just dump them in the pot and I simmer it. My wines, I got sugar going in and some salt. I have two types of mustard seeds here. I got yellow mustard seeds and brown mustard seeds. Why two mustard seeds for the Dijon? Well, first of all, I'm a little extra. Second of all, the yellow mustard seeds give us a good base note, whereas the brown seeds give us a little bit of that bite. And then with the Dijon, we can puree it to make it nice and smooth. It is time to smoothify my mustard seeds with this thing. I've never used one of these before, and I don't know how, but I am gonna do my best. Oh, I think there's action happening in there. It's kind of hard to tell. I feel like a witch. I've been told I can leave a couple of chunks. Not on my watch. This is gonna be chunkless as all great Joe's Mustard brand mustards are. So now we can take our cabbage and put it into a bowl. We're gonna season it really well with some black pepper. We're gonna take a little bit of sugar because we want a little bit of sweetness here. Cabbage could be bitter sometimes. A little more salt, some plain white vinegar, and then that dill. Give it a mix. Slaw is done, let's throw it in the fridge. This is done. Now this is going into a jar. So ribs are in the oven for about 90 minutes, they're out. We want the meat to kind of cool off and kind of come together. Now all we want to do is take them out of the packets and give them a little glaze with our barbecue sauce. You don't have to go too crazy, just a nice slathering, like slather, right? Everyone knows what slather means, right? The top side of the ribs are the presentation side, give them a turn. And this is where you want to do a little smothering rather than slathering. Go maximalist here, because again, it's our presentation side, it's gonna look good. It's time to make my barbecue sauce. First step, we're going to heat up this oil in a pan. And while it's heating, I'm going to brown up some onions and garlic. I'm gonna cook these up for about five minutes until they are soft and a little brown. Ribs are sauced, ready to go, and now it's time for the fire. And by fire, I mean smoke. We have a stovetop smoker. And we're gonna turn the burner on low. We're gonna take some of our wood chips. This is a hickory wood chip. So I have the flame on underneath, but I'm also gonna kind of jump start it a little here because I don't want a raw wood flavor or a raw smoke flavor. I'm gonna lower my heat. And now I can take this tray and kind of smother them lightly. So you see, I smothered the flame, but we still have a lot of smoke. So what I'm gonna do while the smoke is happening, I'm gonna take my ribs, put them on here, and I'm gonna slide the top on and just let it smoke for about 10 minutes. So the barbecue sauce has a smoky flavor, but I wanted to give these a little bit of a deeper smoke, and that's why I'm putting them on the smoker. My onions and garlic are looking good. They're ready to be sauced. So I'm gonna start with my braising liquid that I made earlier. I'm gonna put half of this beer in there. I'm gonna throw in some uh, apple cider vinegar, a pinch of salt, some honey, Honey has a lot of other flavors going on that kind of aren't just sweet. And then of course, Joe's Famous Mustards. Promo code, cut the mustard. I'm gonna cook this for about 10 minutes until it reduces and thickens. With the finished sauce, we want it to be stick to the ribs, not thick and gloopy. It's been about 10 minutes. My barbecue sauce is looking delicious and it's smelling real good. So I'm gonna do what I always do and put it in a jar. I'm gonna try not to spill. I'm, I'm failing at that. It's messy, but uh, that's the way we do it at Joe's Mustards. I'm not a sauce man, I'm a mustard man. All right, I got most of it in there. The barbecue sauce is done. We've been in there for about 10 minutes. Let's see how we look. Slide it back. Ooh, it's like mysterious smokiness. We can take these out. My ribs are back. They're looking nice. I have my barbecue sauce right here. I'm gonna cut them up into a manageable size. These ones broke on their own. So now I just gotta do this one and then I'm gonna brush them with some barbecue sauce. Take a small bunch of rosemary, tie it together, dip it in your sauce and use it as a brush. Added benefit, you have a little rosemary flavor going on. I could eat these now, but I'm not allowed. They have to go into the broiler first. I think it'll crisp them up. I think maybe it'll let the, the sauce seep in a little bit. You know, I just, I'm just trusting the process. These ribs have been baked, glazed, smoked. One last thing to do, pop them in the broiler, Get them caramelized and hot. The ribs were just in there a couple minutes and that's all they needed. Um, the broiler was straight fire. So they are nice and uh, crispy on the top. Right now I'm gonna turn these over. 
and we're gonna sauce the other side. All right, back to the broiler. So they've been in the broiler for about 10 minutes. Look how beautiful they look. They're glazed, a little bit of caramelization. The sauce is nice and sticky. All right, my ribs are ready to come out. They are smoking. They're smelling amazing. Time to make a salad. Joe, now is time to make your salad. You're making a shaved fennel and bitter green salad. Chef Frank, look, I'm sure you got a gourmet salad, but let's be honest, we're here for the ribs. Don't be ridiculous. The dressing for the salad is a simple vinaigrette. We got some white wine vinegar, some honey. The bonus here is we get to use those two mustards again. And as a chef, that kind of tickles my heart because when we can get double usage out of something, we're really happy. Pinch of salt, and then I have some fancy olive oil. All right, that's all mixed up. I'm gonna slice my vegetables now. This thing looks a little crazy, but it's really the only kitchen tool if you wanna shave your fingertips off. I'm gonna start with some shallot. This is fennel. Every swipe is a little scary. I'm gonna get this as far away from myself as I can. We have fennel and three different types of radicchio. That is the funniest word I think I've heard. Treviso Tardivo, Rosa de Veneto, and Caso Franco. Each radicchio has a different shape, a different texture, and a different amount of bitterness. I should have trusted you, Chef Frank. The salad is beautiful. Yeah, I mean, we're eating big hunks of meat. We need to balance it out. All right, my salad and dressing are ready to go. So Joe gave me some thick cut white bread. Normally this is served on the side of barbecue to sop up juices, make a small sandwich. But what I'm gonna do is make some Texas toast. At least my version of Texas toast. Texas toast is generally butter, bread, put in a pan or on a griddle and browned, not toasted. Which is kind of funny because it's called toast. For my version, we're gonna use mayonnaise, not butter. I think it has better flavor for this sandwich. While those are browning, I'm gonna get the other side because I'm gonna toast both sides. So this looks good, I like the color on it, and my Texas toast is done. All we gotta do now is plate the sandwich up. It's time to plate. First, I'm going to dress my radicchio salad. Toss that around, I'm ready to put these on a plate. All right, we've got a nice looking salad there. I'm gonna throw my ribs on here. Time to plate, first piece of Texas toast on the bottom. I'm gonna take some of our barbecue sauce, just a little schmear. Then we go with our nice piece of boneless rib. I'm gonna put a little more barbecue sauce on top. Don't be afraid if you get some drips there, because drips are for dipping. Joe, you're gonna be finishing the dish with Urfa pepper. First thing I want you to do is taste it and tell me what you think. Yeah, it's got like a smoke to it. It's got a kick. I like spicy food, but I don't like it to be too crazy, so that's like the perfect amount of spice for me. And then my other piece of Texas toast gets the mayonnaise, slaw on top, bread on top. Look at that beauty. You have never seen a McRib look this good. This is my take on Chef Frank's recipe. And this is my take on Joe's recipe. Can't wait to see how Joe did with my recipe. Hey Joe, nice Chef meeting Frank, you. Chef Frank, nice meeting you. How'd it go? I think it went good. Yeah. I think it went good. It was, uh, it looked delicious. So yeah. That's what I, I hear good things. Okay, all yeah. right. And how did, uh, how did it go with it my It was fun. We, we had ingredients. a good time. <laughs> We had a good time with it, right? Yeah. Uh, I think when you see it, you'll be like, that looks familiar. You spruce it up a little bit, though? Just a little. Ooh. <laughs> oh. That I, looks beautiful, man. Look at that. So is this. Yeah, I have a question. What does it look like to you? Were you going for a McRib? Yes. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I told you to be familiar. <laughs> I love it. I am dying for you to try this. I want, I want your approval. It looks great. I'm, I'm so excited about this. Cheers. Yes. Hey, cheers. So everything about this is absolutely amazing. I really appreciate that. Ribs are like perfect. I don't know if I could do better cooking the ribs myself. Stop it. <laughs> the barbecue sauce isn't too sweet. It's mm -hmm. got some bite to it. Yeah. It's not hot. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take a piece of that radicchio. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna eat it with the rib. Okay. All right, let's do that. Great job, man. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, I need to make rib now. It is, it is my turn. Yeah. You gotta try what I need yes. now. Take the sandwich, but kind of step back a little so you don't get it on your body uh, and take a big bite. Okay. <laughs> this is amazing. It tastes homemade. It tastes yeah. like, uh, you know, it's cooked love. with cooked I keep with love. The love. I keep the love here. Yeah? So just a little sprinkle. Hey, you sprinkle it up? <laughs> I was, I was <laughs> sprinkling Urfa. <laughs> I did want to ask if you are interested in uh, investing. I have a business, it's Joe's Mustards. It's a monthly mustard club. That's an easy yes. Yeah, an all right, you're in? Yes, I'm in. <laughs> no chunks. No chunks. <laughs> well done, I mean, uh, thank you for sharing this. Hey, your dish was beautiful too, thank you so much. I'm gonna be talking about this for, I think, a long time. Excellent. Okay.